Right. Hi everyone. Oh my gosh, I hope this is recording. Um so I finally managed to get um a screen recording software sorted. Took me absolute days. Um, you know how I am with technology. So I hope all of you are um doing well and staying safe at home. Um I've had a few emails through from some of you sort of saying that you're struggling to understand this, which is absolutely fine. So get your booklets out. I'm gonna do this as if you know we're in class. Get your booklets out, follow along. I know you'll have already done the work for this. Um well some of you might not have done, but I've already done the work, so hopefully you've already had a chance to go through it once and this is just going to be a bit more like a clarification for you. Um, so, voluntary manslaughter, um, there's two defences to murder which can then result in a conviction of voluntary manslaughter. So when someone, let's say I go and kill someone who's going to be my victim today, I'm still going to use you guys as my victims. Um, Oh, I've got like four classes to choose from. Who am I going to pick? Okay, I'll say Caitlin because I teach about six Caitlins. So all you Caitlins out there. Um, let's say I kill Caitlin. Um, usually I would be charged with murder. However, there are two defences called special defences, which I can plead or raise, which then if they are successful, my murder conviction will be reduced to one of voluntary manslaughter. And you want to get it reduced from murder to voluntary manslaughter because voluntary manslaughter carries a lesser sentence than murder does. So let's say I've murdered Caitlin, I've got no defences. We all know that is a mandatory life sentence. The judge has to sentence me to life imprisonment. However, if I get that reduced to voluntary manslaughter, that's a discretionary life sentence. So the judge has the option to sentence me to life imprisonment if he wants to. However, he doesn't have to. He can sentence me to less. Okay? Um, so, oh, this is fancy. I can't remember putting these effects in, but I must have done. Um, so, the two defences are loss of control and diminished responsibility. They're separate from each other. They both res result in a voluntary manslaughter conviction if they are pleaded successfully. We're not going to look at loss of control just yet. We're just going to focus on diminished responsibility right now. So, moving on. Diminished responsibility is dealt with under Section 52 of the Coroners and Justice Act 2009. Um, previously, it was a homicide at 1957. That then got taken over by Section 52 of the Coroners and Justice Act 2009. Um, so previously, if I had have killed Caitlin because I had a mental illness, um, before this these defences were brought in, if I'd have killed Caitlin as a result of my mental illness, I could use the insanity defence. However, there were some people who had killed someone because of their mental illness. However, that mental illness was not severe enough for them to be classed as insane. So you've got a group of people who were sort of stuck in the middle. I kind of want to raise it and I should have a defence to raise because I didn't just go out and kill someone because I wanted to. It was a mental illness that affected me and therefore that you know, triggered me to kill someone. However, I'm not mentally ill enough to be classed as insane and locked away in an asylum. So we needed to introduce a defence for those people. Um, so, moving on to it, it's very nicely structured, is diminished responsibility. So there's a clear cut structure for you to follow to find out if someone is able to plead diminished responsibility. So the defendant will be able to successfully plead diminished responsibility, which will then result in a charge of voluntary manslaughter if they suffer from an abnormality of mental functioning, which arose from a recognised medical condition, 
substantially impaired their ability to do one of the three things. So it doesn't have to impair their ability to do all three of these things here. Okay, just one of them. So one or more. So it can impair the ability to do this, do this, or do this. Or impair the ability to do all three of them. Or impair the ability to do only two. Doesn't have to be all three. Um, and that abnormality of mental functioning, which has impaired their ability to do one of those three things, provides an explanation for their actions or their emissions, which has then resulted in somebody dying or someone being killed. All right, so like we've done with murder, we're going to go through, can you remember in murder, we went through the actus reus, what is meant by an unlawful killing, what is meant by um, under the Queen's peace, we're going to go through each one of these things and look at what's meant by it. So what is meant by an abnormality of mental functioning? What can we class as a recognised medical condition? How do we know if it's substantially impaired their ability to do these three things? How do we know if it provides an explanation? So we're going to go through each one now. Um, so abnormality of mental functioning. The test that we ask is a question similar to the but for test. Um, so, was the defendant's mental functioning so different from that of an ordinary human being that the reasonable man would term it abnormal? Right, so, was their mental state so affected by whatever medical condition that they have um, that to the ordinary and prudent reasonable man, who you've been learning a lot about in negligence, I'm sure, um, he would find that abnormal. So this is a question for the jury, pretty much. Um, in a murder case, so if the jury decides, yes, it was so different from that of an ordinary human being that we'd find it abnormal, then it can be said that that person has an abnormality of mental functioning. If not then there's no abnormality of mental functioning. So this is just a question for the jury. So the judge will say to the jury, was it okay, Kelly has killed Caitlin because she has, because Kelly has depression. Um, did this then make Kelly's mental functioning so different from that of an ordinary human being that the reasonable man off the street would think it was abnormal? Um, so... That's how we know if someone has an abnormality of mental functioning. That abnormality of mental functioning has to have arose from a recognised medical condition. Okay, so this includes both physical and psychological conditions. Okay, so some examples. Um, in your exam, you'll likely get one of these as an example. They're not going to, you know, come at you with some medical condition that you've never heard of in your life um so started off you should have done your um your case summaries so hopefully you know what these cases are about uh, what the outcome was and why but i'm just going to go through them real quick so in crown and do you know what? i can't even say this is it vinegar vinegar and i'm going to say vinegar so in crown and vinegar the defendant was suffering from um, extreme jealousy so they had a condition known as othello syndrome um which meant they felt extreme feelings of jealousy with no real um rhyme or reason to it they couldn't con they felt a jealousy burning inside them so deep <laughs> that they could not control their emotions right and that the othello syndrome was held to be a recognized medical condition um, battered woman syndrome aloalia is a very um, popular case which i think i've spoke to you about before if you can get your hands on it there's a film it's quite an old film i think but it's called provoked and that tells the story of Kieran G. Alawalia. Alawalia had suffered years of abuse from her husband. Um, he beat her, he'd, he'd um, burn her with irons. And one night, she, while he was sleeping, she went up and she um, set him on fire, 
basically. Um, and he died as a result. So, what happened was, Alawalia pleaded uh, loss of control, which is also known as provocation, um, at trial. However, this failed because she had a slow burn reaction. We're going to look at this in more detail when we got to loss of control. But it wasn't like she just snapped like that. However, um, diminished responsibility succeeded because it was held that Alawalia had a recognised medical condition, which was battered woman syndrome. And this had um, significantly impaired her ability to form a rational judgment. And that's how diminished responsibility succeeded. Um, premenstrual tension in Smith was a girl who I think stabbed a barmaid um, and threatened to kill everyone. Her father, um, once she had been arrested, went through her diary and found out that she had these erratic outbursts around the same time of the month. So they were able to argue that she, um, she killed as a result of um, a recognised medical condition, which was her premenstrual tension. Um, epilepsy, Campbell, some of you struggled to find the facts on this, so I'll just quickly go through them. Campbell um, was a man who killed um, a woman with a hockey stick because she had denied his sexual advances. So he had epilepsy and he was able to argue that the frontal lobe damage that had been done to his brain um, because of the ep epilepsy. Um, so the epilepsy was a recognised medical condition which had given him an abnormality of mental functioning because it had um, damaged his frontal lobe. So he had an abnormality of mental functioning, wasn't able to like control his emotions and feelings because of the epilepsy. Um, chronic depression seers, again, a few people had problems finding this. Um, it was just a husband who killed his wife. That's all you really need to know. I think he stabbed her to death, if you want to know the gory details. Um, but he was said to have a recognised medical condition, which was chronic depression. Um, and this had created an abnormality of mental functioning. Um, burn is over here. So... Sexual psychopath strangled a young woman and mutilated her body. However, he had a condition which meant he was unable to control his perverted desires. So, the irresistible impulses were the recognised medical condition, um, which had given him an abnormality of mental functioning because that is something so different from an ordinary human being that a reasonable man would term it abnormal. Um, and that provided an explanation for why he murdered this young woman and mutilated her body, apparently. So, Lloyd tells us substantial doesn't mean total. So, it doesn't have to have totally impaired the defendant's um, ability to understand the nature of his conduct, form a rational judgment or exercise self-control. Um, in goals, the judge said, so... The judge said to the jury, okay, this medical condition has to have substantially impaired D's ability to do one of three things. Um, and the jury turned around and said, well, what do you mean substantially impaired? Um, and the judge in gold said, I'm not telling you what I mean by substantially impaired. It's, it's obvious what I mean by substantially impaired. Um, so he pretty much just told the jury to use their common sense of what was meant by substantially impaired. However, he said, if, if you must have some guidance on this, then substantially means important or weighty. What do we mean by understand the nature of, um, the conduct? So this basically means the, de the defendant won't understand the nature of the conduct if they don't know what they're doing. Okay. So for example, if I, um, am delusional as a result of a medical condition that I have um, and I think that I'm killing the devil when in fact I am killing a human being um, 
I will not understand the nature of the conduct. I won't understand what I'm doing. I don't understand I'm killing a person because I think I'm killing the devil. So ability to form a rational judgment. This is where the defendant's recognised medical condition um, has given them an abnormality of mental functioning to the point that they cannot use reason or logic anymore. Like, so in the case of Alawalia, she was she just saw no other way out than to set her husband on fire. And finally, um, the abnormality of mental functioning has to provide an explanation for that act of killing someone. So let's say I have a medical condition which makes me think that... Um, there is a lovely fluffy unicorn in my room that I love very very much and I then go around killing people that still doesn't really provide an explanation of why I went around killing people so yeah you're having these delusions but why were you killing people because you're having these delusions that there was a lovely fluffy unicorn in your bedroom um, however if I was having delusions that aliens had come down from wherever um, and were attacking me um, and as a result I was going around killing people because I thought that they were human I thought that they were aliens sorry um, then that would provide an explanation of why I was going around and killing those people because I thought they were aliens I hope this helps let me know if there's anything that you want me to clear up I'm sorry if I keep saying um, it's just weird being sat in front of a laptop literally just talking to a computer screen. Um, I'll try sort that out. Oh, I just did it again. I'll try sort that out for the next one or I'll try editing this and cutting all of them out. And stay safe, stay indoors and I'll see you in a few weeks with another video. Well, I won't see you. Um, but... I will speak to you next week with another video.